Hey, Matt. Yes, this is a huge conference. There's going to be thousands of fintech startups and about 20 total unicorns, meaning startups with a valuation of more than $1 billion. So this is really kicking off the conversation about fintech right now and how these challengers are changing the traditional banking industry. So let's bring in the perfect guest on this subject, Richard Tang, the CEO of AGDM Financial Services Regulatory Authority. Talk about when we're balancing these fintech innovators and these disruptors. How do you promote that innovation, especially in this region here in the Middle East, while also making sure there's security in the financial system? I do think that we are in a very dynamic region. If you look at where Abu Dhabi is situated, it's at the gateway of a fast-growing Middle East, Africa, next to India and China, vast marketplace. If you look at just Minasa region alone, home to 3 billion people, uh, most of the demographics below 25 years old, and it's hugely underserved in financial services. So if you look at, in, in the East, you have Singapore that's really serving the Asia-Pacific region. You have London that's serving the Euro uh, hemisphere. And, and in this region, I think we do like a fintech uh, hub. And Abu Dhabi Global Market becomes that fintech hub, really serving a fast-growing region. And there are two aspects of it. Right? One, fintechs are really looking at funding. And if you look at the government com committed funding in the last two years from this region, our 1.5 billion US dollars, Abu Dhabi government put in 1.2 of those, right? So it's really committed into this space, fintech, startups, VCs, building a digital future. The second part is really a regime that is world class, that is cutting edge and progressive to really support new business model coming to the marketplace while managing risks, which you mentioned, in the right fashion so that they can grow in a sustainable fashion. And Abu Dhabi global market represent that. No one in the region offer the same suite of regulatory regime and framework that we do to support new business models, as well as traditional business models. One of the themes that we're seeing in this space is not just these fintech disruptors, but also tech companies increasingly entering the space. How do you factor in those companies, whether it's Apple or Facebook or anyone, when you're considering it from the regulatory front? I do think it's quite natural for them to muscle into this space. If you look at it compared to, like, say, if you look at the situation four years back, right? um, there are many parts of the financial services sector that is underserved, uh, are not served at all. Financial inclusion is a big issue. SME lending is a big issue. That created things like challenger banks coming into place. Consumers de demand new ways of products and services being delivered. Right? And technology companies are great at that. They are great at investing in the future, putting a lot of resources into R&D. They are great at recruiting the bright and the brightest. Uh, they are young and the brightest. And they are good at creating new marketplaces. Right? So if you look at what Netflix has done, how it has reimagined how entertainment can be delivered, Apple Store. So you have now many financial institutions saying that we need to act more like technology companies by creating new marketplaces. I think that's not only true for financial institutions, it's also true for regulators. Because regulators can no longer afford to be technology agnostic, as many regulators say so. But we need to be understanding of technology and how we can enable new marketplaces. How can we embrace some of these new ideas, creating new value uh, for the society? So on that front, when it comes to new ideas, we've heard so much talk about this digital currency, Libra. <laughs> How do you think about that? Would you welcome something like Libra in a system here? So we don't call it digital currency because they have not demonstrated all the characteristics needed for a currency, store of value, medium of exchange, a unit of account, right? But we, we do regulate them as digital assets because there are investors, there are speculators out there that wish to get exposure. We do not opine on the value of such assets. We don't opine on the performance of such assets. But as long as investors wish to invest in this, right, uh, we are taking a very a slight approach compared to many other regulators. So some regulators have decided not to regulate them at all. You have other regulators that regulate them with a light touch, and that leaves a lot of residual risk on the table. With those risks, institutional investors are not going to participate in that space. And in any marketplace where you only have retail, high net worth, you're going to see a lot of volatility in that asset class. Mm -hmm. So when we examine this issue, we make sure that the risk of AML KYC is properly addressed, the risk of custody is properly addressed. This year alone, you have one billion worth of coins that's lost and stolen. And that doesn't instill confidence in this marketplace. Right? The risk of technology governance, the risk of 
market operations, exchange operations, you're not trading against your clients, for instance. And the risk of investor protection is properly addressed. Once you address those risks, we create a safe environment, safe marketplace for investors to at least participate in that space properly. Right? So we have by now given out nine in principle approval to crypto exchanges. Of that nine, I would say that more than 90% of the application coming to us, we rejected them because they don't address all these risks, which is important. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.